In this video, we will talk about the next type of RNA that is T or transfer RNA. And as the name tells us, transfer RNA is going to help in transfer or transport of amino acids from cytoplasm to the site of protein synthesis. These are also known as soluble RNA. So we write it as sRNA, soluble RNA and it is also the smallest of all three types of RNAs. Now let us see the structure of this first. It is a clover leaf like structure. It is a single stranded structure but there is appearance of three loops and that's why we call it clover leaf like structure. Here is one loop then there is one loop which is on the lower side a small non-functional arm and one more loop which is on this side. So now let us label these part. This is the fifth prime and this is which is an overhang this is the third end or third prime. Third prime has OH free. The carbon which is a, the third carbon has hydroxyl functional group free here. Now these three loops which we see they have been given names according to the functions or some special things that they have. The lowermost part is or this loop is known as anti codon loop or arm. Anticodon arm. This is another term given to it. Now when we are talking of anticodon that means it has anticode. Codes are present on mRNA. So suppose this strand which we have drawn is mRNA and the code here on mRNA is AUG. This becomes the code. So anticode which is going to help read this code is on this loop. So what would be the anticode on the arm here? A is going to pair with U. It is, this is also RNA so there is no T. So it's going to be U here. U is going to pair with A and G is going to pair with C. So this is an anticode. And that is why this loop is termed as anticodon loop or anticodon arm. The loop which is towards the third end is known as T loop and its function is ribosome recognition and ribosome binding. It helps in ribosome recognition and binding. So it helps in identification of that ribosome where this protein synthesis is taking place and to which ribosome this tRNA is going to go and attach. There is one more term or name which is given to this loop. It is known as GTP-CG loop. Here this P is also represented by Psi and it stands for pseudo uridin that means uracil is modified into a different type and that modified uracil is known as pseudo uridin which is represented either by psi or we can write it as p also in this part so this is here and that is what is known as gtp cg so when we write it it's going to be gtp cg so this is the reason why the name has been given. Function is ribosome recognition, ribosome binding. The loop which is out towards the fifth end is known as D loop or it is also known as DIHU loop. Reason here also uracil is modified and it stands for di hydrouracil and that is why DIHU loop. The function which is performed by this D loop is amino acid 
identification. So now what has happened is this anticodon loop reads the code from mRNA. This loop, D loop, identifies which amino acid is to be brought here. T loop is going to recognize which ribosome it has to go and attach to. But where is this amino acid actually going to bind? Here it has just identified or recognized that amino acid. So amino acid binding site is different. Amino acid binding site is here where OH is present. So third carbon which has OH functional group, this is the place where amino acid binds. So we call it amino acid binding site. So there are four loop or loop like structures. All of them have their function. But the amino acid which is recognized by D loop actually comes and binds here. There are many ribosomes where protein synthesis takes place. So T loop is going to recognize to which ribosome it has to go and attach to. And because of the function, this D loop is also known as amino acid recognition site. This is T loop is known as ribosome recognition site. This is amino acid recognition site. This is the code reading site or anticodon site. And here amino acid binds. So amino acid binding site. At the third end, this strand which is at the third end and it is slightly extended. We call it overhang. Here the last code is CCA. We always read the code from 5 prime towards 3 prime. So code will be read in this direction because this is 5 towards 3. We cannot say ACC, it would have it would be a reverse code. So the last code is CCA because it is always read from 5 prime towards 3 prime. So this is the structure of tRNA. Because of these three loops, it is called a clover leaf-like structure and it is the smallest one. If we compare the percentage or how much of which RNA is present, we can write that mRNA is high, high, slightly or we can say approximately 5%. tRNA is about 20% and rRNA is 80%. So maximum number or maximum percentage of RNA is of rRNA, then transfer RNA and least are mRNAs. So this is the percentage distribution. After this, we will talk about rRNA and we can discuss it here itself because the structure of rRNA has not been clearly explained yet. We just know that it is made up of proteins plus rRNA and it is plus rRNA and it is a coiled structure. Coiled structure. We do not know the detailed structure as we uh, do for uh, mRNA or tRNA. So we don't have any diagram to be drawn. Function of ribosome RNA is protein synthesis. So we clearly know its function but not the structure. So this is how the two RNAs that is mRNA and tRNA structures are and about rRNA only this much is known that it helps in protein synthesis. It is some kind of a coiled structure and made up of proteins and rRNA.